himself in his cloak and went out seeking a high and solitary spot necessary for his purpose. His way lay up a hill, along to a point where a spur jutted out far from all scenes of activity. It was dark, for the moon would be late arising, but that dark sky was filled with stars shining with jewel-like luster, and there was an illimitable sense of space. A silence so profound that it seemed to stretch very confined to the world. The earth was a cup full to the brim, running over with this ineffable quietude, inducing in him a likeness, buoyancy of feeling, as if he were borne up upon it and were drifting out into its infinite spaces, and gently into it until it covered him completely. Stillness here was not so much a soundlessness as a profound background <coughs> upon which the cadences and motivity of nature play in various degrees, like strata of bright cloud drifting across the solid blueness of space. dreamed that he paused at the edge of a walnut grove. He drew deep breaths of cool air into his lungs. When he had done this for some time, he knelt and offered a simple prayer, addressing no God, speaking aloud, so that his voice in the stillness had a strange direction quality as though he had hurled a spear at some infinitely remote target. Grant that I may find what I seek in the mists of time for the salvation of my people, my nearest friend. And then arose, walked to the edge of the plateau, spread his coat upon the grass, and lay down flat on his back, <coughs> fixing his eyes unwinkingly on a distant star. Very soon his former sense of immersion in space deepened. The star drew him towards it, he began to float gently towards it, he began his spirit released from its flesh to spread as pinions and soar. chill wind blew over him. He rose slowly and knelt with bowed head for some time, facing the sun, whose level beams bathed him in a bloody glow as he offered these silent thanks and went with his purposeful military stride back to camp. 